G'day and welcome back to the garage. After completing some work to the clutch basket on the RM250 restoration, I've found a tool referenced in the workshop manual for holding the drive hub when removing or installing the clutch assembly. A tool like this allows you to tighten the nut to the correct torque or remove the nut without damaging the clutch basket or your hands. After completing some research online, I found that the genuine Suzuki part is still available to purchase. Unfortunately, I also found that it is very expensive. To undo the clutch hub nut, I generally just hang onto the hub, rag in hand and use an impact gun to blast the nut off. This works for me, but it's a bit dicey, especially if the nut is over tightened. There's plenty of options out there for holding clutches. A quick browse through Google Images shows there's a lot of tools you can buy and there's a lot of homemade solutions as well. But rather than just go and buy a new tool or go broke buying a genuine Suzuki tool, I thought it would be fun to try and make one myself. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's get started. So the first thing to do is some research. And as always, Google has the answers. Based on the Suzuki tool part number, I Google as many useful images as I can. And with the photos printed out, there's one important image to take a look at. I was lucky enough to find an image of the tool with a scale included. And with this photo, I can use the scale to work out the critical dimensions. So with most of the dimensions known, I can scavenge some steel and start the fabrication. After cutting the piece of steel to its rough length, it's time for the milling machine, where I bring the part to its final dimensions. After some marking out, it's back to the mill, where I locate the part in preparation for cutting the adjustment slot. That took some time on my small machine, but after a quick clean up, it's starting to look okay. And now it's back to the mill where a small hole is drilled to accept a roll pin that will end up holding the adjustment screw. And that's it for the milling machine for now. It's onto the lathe where the hole for the adjustment screw is drilled and bored.
The next job is to make the adjustment screw. I find a suitable piece of round bar, fit it to the lathe and start machining. Test fit confirms that we're on the right track. After some more machining, it's time to add the knurled finish to the adjustment screw. This is done with a knurling tool. It's simply pushed into the work with some force, cutting the finish into the surface of the part. Adding the groove that matches up with the roll pin allows for a test fit that shows how it goes together. And then it's back to the milling machine, where I add the flats to the screw which will allow for the use of a spanner if need be. Back to the lathe and onto the last piece of the adjusting screw. This is just a small piece of M8 threaded rod cut to length off camera. Each end needs to be machined down. One end to fit the part we just finished and the other to fit inside the hole drilled inside the tool body. Some thread lock is applied to the join and the adjusting screw is complete. The next part to make is what I'm going to call the carriage block. This is just a small block of metal that is moved within the tool body by the adjusting screw. Just like the tool body, the part is cut to rough size on the bandsaw and then it's over to the milling machine to bring it to its final dimension.
fit between the two parts okay, the carriage block is put back in the mill. I find the centre of the part, then drill and tap the M8 hole that will run along the M8 threaded rod of the adjusting screw. With the threaded hole now completed, it's time to start work on the final parts of the tool, the handle and the gripping jaws. Starting with the handle, I find an old piece of steel that's about the right width and thickness. It's then cut to length, cleaned up off camera, and then the end is rounded and drilled, ready to be welded later on. The final parts to be fabricated are the jaws. These are made from a length of angle iron cut into the basic shape on the bandsaw and then finished on the bench grinder off camera. The end that engages with the clutch hub then has a tapered ground to ensure a good fit. And finally, that's all of the parts fabricated. Now all of that time and effort put into these parts can be easily ruined by the next step, welding. And that's the part that I was dreading the most. And so after some basic setup, the MIG welder is fired up and the handle is welded to the tool body, followed by the two jaws, one to the body and one to the carrier. With the welding completed without any disasters, the final test fit of the parts looks okay. And finally, it's time to consider the surface finish. And for that I'm using a gun blue kit. Bluing is a process that chemically forms surface magnetite, which is the black oxide of iron. This black oxide finish provides a dimensionless barrier against corrosion, so it's perfect for things like tools. And luckily, it's easy to apply. The kit I used is a three-step process consisting of degreasing, de-rusting and finally the application of the bluing chemical. This completes the oxide reaction and adds the black surface finish. After starting with a few photos from the internet, I now have a tool for use in future projects. And although it was a lot of work and there are a lot of easier options out there, it was fun to make and something that I'll be able to use on different bikes in years to come. So keep an eye out for it on future episodes of G9 Garage.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.